Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. This is finding out how you are smart. And I'm Mrs. Davis. So multiple intelligences. There are eight of them all together. And I'll give you the definition in a second. Um, first of all, I would like to tell you about Harvard University. This is their educational logo. And that is Latin. And it stands for truth, kindness, and beauty. And this guy right here, Howard Gardner, he was a professor at Harvard, and he's the one that came up with the theory of multiple intelligences. This is where you would write the definition. Um, it's based on the idea that humans process information in different ways. And his theory was a critique of the standard intelligence theory, which emphasized one's abilities. I'm now going to go through each of the eight intelligences and I want you to include three examples of what they look like. So the first intelligence is logical mathematical. And this is having to do with reasoning and calculating. You will think conceptually, abstractly, and are able to see and explore patterns and relationships. So people who have a strong intelligence in logical and mathematical, they like to experiment, they like to solve puzzles, um, they like to ask cosmic questions. They also can be taught through logic games, investigations, mysteries, and they need to learn and form concepts before they can deal with the details. So they, they need to um, kind of see the big picture of things. The second intelligence is linguistic, and linguistic means using words effectively. So these learners have highly developed auditory skills and often think in words. They like reading, playing word games, making up poetry or stories, and they can be taught by encouraging them to say and see words and read books together. So tools for linguistic learners include computers, games, multimedia, books, tape recorders, and lectures. Then we get into intrapersonal. Um, intrapersonal means understanding one's own interests or goals. Understanding one's own interests or goals. These learners tend to shy away from others. They're in tune with their inner feelings. They have wisdom, intuition, and motivation, as well as a strong will, confidence, and opinions. They can be taught through independent study and introspection. Tools for these learners include books, creative materials, diaries, privacy, and time. They are the most independent of the learners. Independent meaning they like to work by themselves, typically. Then we have the other intelligence of... Um, interpersonal. And interpersonal means understanding and interacting with others. So understanding and interacting with others. These students learn through interaction. They have many friends, empathy for others, and street smarts. They can be taught through group activities, seminars, dialogues. Tools for these learners include the telephone, audio conferencing, time and attention from the instructor, video conferencing, writing, computer conferencing, and email. Then we've got musical um, intelligence. And musical intelligence shows sensitivity to rhythm and sound. So they, the definition is they show sensitivity to rhythm and sound. These learners love music, but they are also sensitive to sounds in their environments. They may study better with music in the background. They can be taught by turning lessons into lyrics, speaking rhythmically, tapping out time. And tools for these learners include musical instruments, music, radio, stereo, CDs, and multimedia. Okay, then we've got the bodily kinesthetic intelligence. These folks use the body effectively like dancers or a surgeon. So they use the body effectively like a dancer or a surgeon. Uh, these folks are keen. They have a keen sense of body awareness. They like movement, making things, and touching. They communicate well through body language. 
and can be taught through physical activity, hands-on learning, acting out, and role-playing. And tools for these learners, learners include equipment and real objects. Then we've got the spatial learners, or visual spatial learners. And the definition of this intelligence is they think in terms of physical space. They think in terms of physical space kind of like architects and sailors. So they are very aware of their environments. They like to draw, do jigsaw puzzles, read maps, and daydream. They can be taught through drawings, verbal and physical imagery. Tools for these learners include models, graphics, charts, photographs, drawings, three-dimensional modeling, video, video conferencing, television, multimedia, text with pictures, charts, and graphs. And lastly, we have the naturalists. Now, I want to say something about the naturalists. Sometimes it is included um, in Gardner's Multiple Intelligences, and sometimes it's not. There's also two other intelligences that he has later added to his group. Um, I'm not even going to talk about those two today. But I do want you to understand that this one, sometimes you'll see it and sometimes you won't. So the definition of a naturalist is the ability to discriminate among living things, the ability to discriminate among living things, um, meaning plants and animals, and sensitivity to other features of the natural world. So things like clouds and rock configurations. Let me read that one more time because that's a long one. The ability to discriminate among living things and sensitivity to other features of the natural world. Uh, this ability was clearly of value in our evolutionary past as hunters, gatherers, and farmers, and it continues to be, a, to be central in the roles such as botanist or chef. Um, I don't actually have any tools for this style of learner, so go ahead and, and leave that example off, if you will. So... Let's get on to testing. So why is traditional testing a bad way to measure intelligence? Well, this is our nightmare. Testing, traditional testing, is typically bad because it measures one's abilities and is not written acknowledging the eight ways that humans process information, the Gardner's multiple intelligences. So it's really just one lens into somebody's ability and not how they process or what their intelligence is actually like. Um, so let's look at grades. So do grades typically measure intelligence? And the answer to that is no, they typically measure effort. For example, so once a musician has enough ability to get into a top music school, the thing that the that distinguishes one performer from another is how hard he or she works. That's it. And what's more, the people at the very top don't work just harder or even much harder than everyone else. They work much, much harder. Um, IQ scores claim to measure intelligence. So this is um, kind of a breakdown of if you scored a 70 or below, you would be borderline. If you scored around an 85, you would be below normal. 100 is upper normal. Then you go on to bright, gifted, highly gifted. So you see these are supposedly measuring intelligence. And interestingly enough, IQ follows this bell curve. And so when you look at the population, if you notice above 100, it's the highest. That's because the majority of people actually fall around 100 with very few people following um, down by the 60 or the 140. But it's really based on measuring something against each other. And a lot of times it's just looking at effort and not really your abilities and really not your intelligence. So let's look here. So IQ. IQ scores actually measure what skill you've developed, not native intellig intelligence. So what skill you've developed, not native intelligence. It also actually measures, um, or IQ score actually change with your life situation. 
meaning if you become uh, rich all of a sudden or you fall into poverty, um, you move from one country to another, or you just are changing throughout your life because you age. So IQ can actually change. And then lastly, IQ, um, they don't indicate a thing about someone's actual intellectual limits. Often, in fact, if you look here, um, this is a picture of somebody who lives in poverty, and you'll notice that as you become rich, your IQ typically goes up. So a lot of times people critique IQ tests because it's not a measure of your intelligence. By the way, IQ stands for intelligence quotient. Um, so it's not actually a measure of your intelligence, but rather how much money you make um, or what background you come from or how much money you have access to. So now let's get back to Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences, and there's three common misconceptions about it. And the first one, if you are strong in one intelligence, you are good at everything in that intelligence area, and that's not necessarily true. Secondly, um, your ability determines your destiny, and that also is not true. You can change your ability over time, and you can have a little bit of control over your destiny. And then lastly, you have to be taught in all seven intelligences to learn something fully. Um, that's not true. While if a teacher is, um, or, or if they give a lesson in the particular strength of your intelligence, yes, you might acquire it easier. But just because a lesson is given in a different style of intelligence doesn't mean that you can't actually learn it. It just means it might be a little bit more challenging for you. So how is SAC New Tech different, and how is it similar? Um, so when you look at our grades, our grades are based upon these five things, which are what we call the school-wide learning outcomes. So I want you to look at number two, agency. And agency is a word that encompasses that, that word from before, effort. So... New Tech and our grades are similar that we will grade you on your effort under the school-wide learning outcome agency, but we're also going to grade you based on your content knowledge and how you think about it. We're going to grade you how well you work with others, collaboration, and then the two forms of communication, oral communication and written communication. So how well do you write about something and how well do you speak about something? These five school-wide learning outcomes hopefully will be taught to you in one of these eight different multiple intelligences or you can look at how you access the information so you can become a better learner yourself. Um, when you're not understanding something and let's say you know you are a um, spatial person, you can ask your instructor or your facilitator to show you something in a different way, maybe show you a picture or a graphic. So we're going to learn more about ourselves and how we learn. And our next step is to find out what intelligences are our strengths and what are our weaknesses. And we're going to now take a Gardner's Multiple Intelligence test.